Got a dope stash sound just like so and so. What's the name, brother? For me, even more ill. Make you wanna holler like Marvin. Did I mention I'm starving and quite thirst? Meaning what? Meaning that I'ma do whatever it takes for me. Peace, what up, y'all? This is J Live, repping New York City. Shout out to ATL, out here in Joburg right now. What's it like being back here for the third time? It's, it's amazing. Uh, I got to treat every time like it's my last because you never know when you'll be back again. First time was in 2008. Uh, came out for Party People. Got to go to uh, Cape Town and Joburg that year. And then came back in 2011 for the Party People reunion. You know, back now, did back to the city. Probably my biggest crowd yet. About 25,000 people in attendance. Awesome show. Yeah, people ask me that a lot, you know, what do I consider myself first, primarily MC, DJ, or producer? It's a tough answer, but I, I would have to say primarily I'm an MC because that's what people know me as most. But as far as skill set wise, it's a tie between DJ and MC because I've been rhyming about as long as I've been DJing. I've been DJing since I was 12 years old. Had my first little Gemini starter kit, collecting my first 12 inches, working on little mixtapes since the age of 12, you know, I'm 40 now, so. I've been rhyming about that long, but obviously, I used to always joke that rhyming is more cost efficient because you don't need records or equipment. You just need a pen and a pad. I'm definitely every bit of DJ as I am an MC, but I understand that people consider me first and foremost an MC because that's why I made my name. first big shows when I was going to University at Albany, I think I was either opening for KRS-One or the Fuji's. And uh, my DJ at the time was one of my classmates. And I had my, my, my table set up in my dorm room. And I was trying to explain to him how the routine goes, basically how to cut, how to cut the, the break so that I could rap to it the way it is on the song. And he kept bringing it in on the drum roll. So I was like, no, 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 let me show you how to do it. So I was, I was doing the routine on the, on the tables, and I always figured, like, because, you know, when we recorded the song, I laid the beat down and then went into the booth and rap. And I figured, man, it'd be, it'd be really cool if I could do them both at the same time someday, but that'd probably take all kinds of crazy superpowers or something. But showing him how I wanted it to sound, I was able to just kind of, you know, like, just mouth the lyrics and spit it while I was juggling. So I was like, you know what, I got it, and I've been doing it like that ever since. You and then production wise, I feel like I benefit from both worlds, you know. I feel like, you know, naturally DJs make the best producers because they know music and they know what people want from music, you know, because they're playing the music and they, they study the music. But then as an MC, uh, I have an advantage as a producer in terms of knowing how to fit a song like a glove. So, you know, being well-rounded in all three crafts definitely pays its dividends. How did I go from teacher to MC or teacher to hip-hop artist? And, you know, actually the question is more, how did I go from hip-hop artist to teacher? Because, you know, like I said, I've been honing my skills since the age of 12. I put out my first single my sophomore year at college. When I was 19, that's when uh, Bragging Rights and Longevity came out. And I had everything set up throughout my, my school years to drop my first album on payday. So when that fell through, that's when I started teaching. So it's almost like, you know, artist turned teacher rather than teacher turned artist, as most think the story went. And then after a few years of teaching, when all of the above took off, I was able to just commit full time to doing music. I came up, you know, around 88, 87, 89. Uh, going to Project Center parties, watching DJs, uh, collecting mixtapes from everyone from Ron G to Kid Capri to Double R to uh, the E Brothers to Doo Wop. And then just, you know, living that life in Spanish Harlem and Harlem, just, you know, DJing Project Center parties, you know, carrying the speakers up, bringing the tables, you know, rocking for a crowd. You know, the last album was called How Much Is Water? theme of the album and the theme of the album is really if 
We live in an age now where traditionally you've paid for music, but now people want music for free, whether it be streaming or, or downloading or what have you. Human rights wise, you would imagine that water should be free, but we pay for water all the time. You know what I mean? You know, it also speaks to the fact that there's only 1% fresh water on the planet right now, and it's much more dire than people give it credit for. We pay for our water, we want our music for free. How much is the water worth? How much is the music worth? And to the degree that the message in the music is, you know, a source of wisdom, to the degree that wisdom is as refreshing and as necessary as water, how much is the music worth in that in, in those regards? Peace, what up y'all? This is Jay Live, live and direct from Joe Berg, and you're checking out Spindle Mag. <laughs>